And in general, you're going to want to set up an emergency kit. So let's actually talk about now the fifth big mistake that I see. It's so common with people, whether they've had guinea pigs for a long time or they're new to having guinea pigs, and that involves common illnesses. It is extremely important for the health and well-being of your guinea pigs that you learn about common illnesses and what those signs and symptoms are. There's just really a handful of common illnesses that are easy to identify and that have symptoms that you can easily see. So it's very important that you're picking up your guinea pigs every day, that you're checking them out, that you're looking and listening for these signs and symptoms of common illnesses. If you can catch common illnesses early, guinea pigs respond very, very well to treatment. It's also really important that you have a vet that you trust that specializes in guinea pigs and knows all about guinea pigs and their common illnesses. I have a vet list here on my website. There's links all over from on the homepage and also in the illness section to take you to this vet list. And this is a vet list. All these vets have been recommended by viewers like you who've had positive experiences with these vets. And these are vets all around the world. I've got vets all around the world. So check them out. I'm sure there's a vet near you. And even if there isn't a vet on my list near you, call one of these vets that are the closest to you and see if there's somebody in your local area that they can recommend. So let's talk about the most common guinea pig illnesses. URI or upper respiratory infection, ringworm, mange mites, heart disease, lumps and bumps, tooth issues, digestion, and bloat are some of the most common illnesses. There are detailed specific illness videos in the illness section of the guinea pig care guide. Sneezing, runny nose, breathing issues, weight loss, trouble eating, lumps and bumps, soft poops or no poops, these are all signs of illness and these are common, yet they are not normal. Any of these signs are an indication that something is wrong and you should seek a vet immediately. Now don't think that just because guinea pigs are little that their vet bills aren't going to be big <laughs> because in fact the opposite is true. A lot of vets consider them exotic pets and in some parts of the world there just really aren't that many vets that are experienced and so the ones that are are in high demand. So something that I think is extremely important and extremely valuable is pet health insurance and yes you better believe you can get pet health insurance for your guinea pigs. Nationwide pet health insurance and now there's starting to be other places where you can find pet insurance that is going to go a long way to help you with the cost of your vet bills. Generally speaking, they will reimburse you for large percentages of the cost of these vet bills. And you'll find that you can spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in just a trip to the vet, depending on what happens, what's wrong, and whether or not it's an emergency. One last thing about guinea pig health and illness, and a huge mistake that I see so many guinea pig owners make is that they don't have an emergency kit or maybe they did set one up but then they let some of those items uh, either expire or they just ran out and they didn't replenish them. Keeping an emergency kit and keeping it up to date is really important. So here's some things that you're going to want to keep in your emergency kit at all times. Emergency food like critical care, syringes, first aid items like bandages, gauze, vet wraps, antiseptic spray, antibiotic ointment, betadine, baby gas drops, Benabac probiotic gel and charcoal capsules for digestion, and teramycin eye ointment. Some other items to consider always having in your emergency kit are ivermectin liquid or paste, antifungal shampoo or head and shoulders, athlete's foot cream or antifungal cream, children's 
allergy liquid or Benadryl, children's Benadryl, child life liquid vitamin C. Liquid vitamin C goes a long way to boosting the immune system and it's also great for mixing in medicine that doesn't taste good. These are just a few things that you're going to want to keep in your emergency kit and if you want to learn more about that here in the illness section I have a whole video and a number of videos dedicated to building and maintaining your emergency kit. In fact some of these videos I go to the dollar store and you'd be surprised how many of these items you can find at the dollar store for really cheap. So really it doesn't cost that much to get your emergency kit going. There's just a few items that are a little bit more expensive but well worth it. For instance, teramycin ointment is more expensive but you really only use that in the case of an eye injury and so in a situation like a hay poke or an eye scratch, it can literally save your guinea pig's eyes. Otherwise, uh, antibiotic ointment, just simple dollar store antibiotic ointment is what you'd wanna use and you can get it really, really cheap. So those are the five major categories of big mistakes that I see all too often. Now my free guinea pig care guide on my website is going to go in a lot more detail and I have dedicated videos about a number of these subjects and of these detailed items and illnesses and things like that. So check out all the follow-up videos about these very specific subjects. Before I wrap this video up, I want to talk about two of the main reasons why people surrender their guinea pigs to the LA Guinea Pig Rescue and other rescues in general. And in my experience, the number one reason why people surrender their guinea pigs to us is because, oh, they got in way over their head, it was more work than they thought, it's just, it was just difficult, it's just way more of a time commitment than they expected. They thought guinea pigs were going to be easy starter pets. There's no such thing as a starter pet. All animals, big and small, deserve our love, respect, care, and to be treated with dignity. So whatever pet you have, you should learn about what those animals need. When it comes to surrendering at the LA Guinea Pig Rescue, I really am grateful that the LA Guinea Pig Rescue exists and that people will uh, surrender to us because, you know, it's better that they surrender their guinea pigs to us and we're able to find them a good home and teach people about proper guinea pig care than that these pigs just suffer, sit in the corner in a crappy cage or neglected. So. Um, I really am grateful to people who decide that guinea pigs aren't right for them and they bring them to the rescue to surrender. We never judge people on that and I'm grateful that people do that and that the rescue is a place where they are able to take them. But what's the second reason? The second main reason, especially when people have adopted from us, what's the main reason why they would bring them back to us? And that's generally because of allergies. So I was talking earlier about hay. People are either allergic to the hay or sometimes they're allergic to the piggies. Sometimes they're allergic to the pea or the dander. In the diet section, I was talking about a number of different hay alternatives. I'm very allergic to Timothy hay myself and I feed mostly orchard grass except for the big pucks of Timothy uh, hay that I give them. I also give them Timothy pellets, but the free grass that I give them is orchard grass and that's gone a long way to helping me with my allergies. Also, I use an air purifier. I do have videos about air purifiers and I've actually, if you look down here in the uh, bottom here of the illness section, it's not just about piggies, but it's about us too and our quality of life. So making sure that you're not allergic to your piggies or if you do have allergies, that you're able to mitigate them. That's something that's really important. So if you've watched this video, then you've learned pretty much everything that I've learned volunteering at the LA Guinea Pig Rescue for many, many years. But there's even more in my free guinea pig care guide. And so I really encourage you to read through my guinea pig care guide. And you know, you can leave me a message. There's a contact form on my website. If there's something that I missed or something that I should clarify or 
I'd really love to get your feedback. This channel is all about sharing everything that I've learned at the LA guinea pig rescue and I hope you'll hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so that you don't miss a video and I can't wait to hear what you have to say in the comments. The comments are a really great place for us to share our experiences and our love for guinea pigs. So if you haven't already, please hit that like button. It helps get this video out to more people and that way we can help them give their piggies the best care possible. Speaking of care, I will put my guinea pig care playlist right here. Every time I make a new video that's about guinea pig care specifically, I add it to the guinea pig care playlist. Sometimes I just have cute videos, sometimes I have videos about various subjects, but anytime it's about guinea pig care specifically, it goes in the playlist and that'll be right here. All right, until next time, thanks for watching.